Okay, in this problem, we're looking for the value of a one-sided limit. The limit as x approaches 2 from the left of this expression here. Notice we have an absolute value involved. So the first step that we want to uh, do is to see, is this a function that is continuous at 2? If it is, then I would be able to simply plug this 2 in for my x uh, and be done. Uh, of course, if we have a domain issue in this expression at 2, uh, we of course won't have continuity. Um, and sure enough, if you look at the limits uh, of the top and the bottom here, as x approaches 2, the top is approaching uh, 0, of course, and the bottom as well, that'd be 4 plus 2 minus 6 is also 0. So we have an indeterminate form. Okay. Now this means, of course, that the value of the limit might still exist, but we have to figure out some way to get rid of these zeros, uh, some way to massage this expression so that these zeros go away. Well, the first thing you might notice about your expression is it involves absolute value. Generally, things are a little bit easier to work with algebraically if you don't have an absolute value. So that might be what we focus on first. How can we get rid of this absolute value? Well, what is the effect of the absolute value on this expression, x minus 2, when x is just to the left of 2? So get a representative value in your mind, like 1.99. 1.99 minus 2. Let's characterize that. Is that positive, negative, big, or small? Well, certainly negative and very small. But the fact that it's negative means the absolute value does what to it? Well, the absolute value changes the sign of negative things. Right? It makes negative things positive. How else might we change the sign of a negative thing? We can multiply by negative 1, right? So that's what we do. Instead of writing the absolute value, we write down a similar effect. We replace the absolute value with some parentheses with a multiplication by negative 1 on the outside because that was its effect on this expression when x is approaching 2 from the left. Okay? Now, unfortunately, that didn't get rid of our 0 over 0 situation here, our indeterminate form. However, now we have a clear factor of x minus 2 on the top. I wonder if this bottom would also factor. Well, sure it would, right? x squared plus x minus 6 is x plus 3 times x minus 2. And notice right here and here, we now have a common factor that we can cancel. And furthermore, this is precisely the factor that was going to 0 when x went to 2. Nothing that remains will go to 0 here. Certainly the denominator will not go to 0 when x approaches 2. So at this point, what's left represents a continuous function. Writing down what we have left, we are now free, because this is a continuous function at 2, to plug into and get negative 1 over 2 plus 3, or negative 1 fifth. Okay? So that's the value of the limit, negative 1 fifth. We might also be interested in a graphic interpretation of what's going on, or graphical interpretation, I should say. Um, what is going on with this function when x is getting very, very close to 2? Well, certainly we know what's going on on the left side of 2. The function is getting arbitrarily close to a height of negative 1 fifth. What about the right-hand side of 2? What is the value of this limit? Well, do you see this is going to be very similar to the one we just worked? The only difference is when we start off asking the question, what is the effect of the absolute value when x is approaching 2 from the right? Now we're talking about values of, uh, of x that are slightly larger than 2, like 2.001, 2.001 minus 2. That's a positive value. What does the absolute value do to positive things? Well, it does nothing to positive things. We are free in the scope of this limit where x is approaching 2 from the right to simply drop the absolute values, to replace them with parentheses without this additional negative. 
Of course, from there, everything else is going to work out similarly, except for we won't have this extra negative all the way through. So the value of this limit should be positive one-fifth. Okay, so coming in from the left, we're approaching a height of negative one-fifth. Coming in from the right, we're getting arbitrarily close to a height of positive one-fifth. That means, graphically speaking, we have ourselves a gap. A gap from 2, remember that's the value x is approaching, uh, at negative 1 fifth on the left to 2 positive 1 fifth on the right. We have a gap in the graph of y equals this uh, expression right here. Okay, so the value of the limit that we sought was negative 1 fifth, the graphical interpretation, a gap from there to there. That's it.